The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Appreciate you growling and prowling with us out here. We have the Dow Industrials down 193. You get NASDAQ off 16, S&P's down 13. Gold contract up $5.80 at 1307. We have silver up uh, two cents, fifteen dollars twenty-four cents. Light sweet crude, sixty-four dollars eleven cents a barrel. Notes and bonds. You get the ten-year note up five ticks, one twenty-three nineteen. Thirty-year up a half a point, one forty-eight oh two. And you know, bottom line, folks, you've been testing the uh, breakout area on that note and bond market the last four days, and guess what? It's deciding to go topside once again. King dollar. King dollar is down one hundred and forty ticks, ninety-six five ten. We'll see if we get any volume. Out of King Dollar as it's uh, getting to lower price. We had uh, no sellers out here yesterday. The euro is at 112.80 to 1 US dollar. The yen is at 111. And the pound is trading at 130 to 1 US dollar. And as we look overseas, uh, each and every time, it looks like uh, the whole Brexit deal could go off for a whole year. Which is yeah. going to be really pretty wild watching how this baby They're going to vote it. in elections, right? Why not? <laughs> Why not? That's right. Why <laughs> we'll not? see what happens. Why not? Let's go over to our man, Mr. Kevin Hinks of TD Ameritrade, Think or Swim. And don't forget, folks, every trading day right here, 11 to 12 Eastern Standard Time, you want to understand options, option strategies, futures. Kevin and his team got a great program. If you happen to be uh, coming down the West Coast right now, just remember to go to YouTube, go to TFNN.com, hit Tiger TV. Kevin Hinks, what's going on? Good morning, Tom. Good morning, Tommy. Another day, another Brexit delay. That's what that is. Oh, I mean, my. it's amazing what's going on. Although, you know, it shouldn't shock anyone right. that this is happening, right? right. I mean, it, it, I would be surprised now if they got something done because, you know, but I thought they made a little bit of a breakthrough with Ireland, saying they would, even if they did a Brexit, they would put that off. Right? Yes. That was showed a little bit of promise with Ireland, which, which frankly, in my opinion, th there's no reasonable resolution to the Ireland problem. Right. No, I and mean, that's 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 the larger problem. How do you put a border right. without putting a border? Right. right. That's how, you, yeah. how do you split up a country? Right. Right. Yeah. Right. You want to start another war? That's a good way of doing it. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. But besides that, you know, ahead of earnings season coming up here on Friday, you know, Delta Airlines is tomorrow. That is that, that we're going to talk about all the airline stocks today, and uh, you know, we're a couple days away from really the start of earnings season. So yes. here we go, guys. No, totally. Hey, Kevin, let me ask you. I know we talked about this before, but it was pretty cool. Yesterday, we were bringing, I was bringing up in the afternoon show. On Bloomberg, they had a, an article about uh, TD Ameritrade, and they had JJ in it. And what it was about was that the retail clients, you know, at, from this uh, retail clients at TD Ameritrade, from the bottom of uh, December, uh, bottom line is that, you know, a lot of these FANG stocks up 35%, and they basically were moving out of those FANG yeah. stocks. Uh, so talk to me a little bit about that. I mean, it was up 35%. I can see why. But it, you know, our, 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 every Monday, the first real Monday of the month, which yesterday was, okay. we released our TD Ameritrade IMX, which, which is the Investor Movement Index. Yes. And what it is, it's a really valuable tool. Right. Because what it, we do is we monitor 11 million retail accounts. Wow. And then we release what, on average, those accounts were doing, and we give you a list. You know, what stocks were the main net bought and net sold during that month. Right. So you're right. As Fang rallied during uh, the month of March, our customers were net sellers of a lot of those Fang names. And it shows, really what it shows to me, and every month, you know, it's different. We get different names that come out, and some of them are justified because of movement or news or something like that. But what it really does, it shows that the retail investor who has always been assumed to be, you know, the lamb going to slaughter and sheep going to slaughter is actually becoming pretty educated yes. and pretty smart.
smart and they're selling rallies and buying dips, right. things like that. Yeah, I know. The article was intriguing, man. It really yeah. was. Yeah. Because, and it, when you, it, what happens, folks, is that it's just absolutely amazing. You know, um, NFLX, if you well, watch this, if you see, you know, you know Netflix is up a, a huge amount, but guess what? Within a month, Netflix went from $231 on December 26th up to 358 on January 16th. Yeah, think back. about that. We oh. we covered that one day in terms of percentage. Yeah, that is incredible. I know, man. It seriously is. How's 100 percent in a month for you? Yeah, seriously. And, and and the other thing is, that really shows how catastrophic of a sell-off that was in late yeah. December. Right. In my eyes, I think that's what it really highlights more than anything else. So many of these stocks. You look at the prices. On December 24th of last year, some of these prices, it's amazing where they've come since then. No, it is. And, and of course, what we're going to have, um, you know, just starting this Friday, right, we're going to have the banks out, right? The banks are yeah, going to basically banks, kick this off again, right? The banks will start us on Friday, and, you know, and here's what everyone should think about. When you're trading banks or if you're long banks going in to, uh, to, to these Friday's earnings, number one, Net interest margin did not go up during this quarter, right? No rate hike right. dur during this first quarter. And number two, a straight-up stock market is not always conducive to trading revenues. Yeah, so interesting. Yeah. two things could be – that's why I have a lot of pause when I think about the bank stocks because a lot of the big names – they were, you know, they've been doing very well because of net interest margin and trading revenues have been kind of a variable with some of these. And I don't think, you know, straight up doesn't always produce great trading revenues. Yeah. No, you need a two-way market. I mean, in a exactly two, a right, Tom. And a little volatility didn't hurt, wouldn't hurt either. No, exactly, exactly. Give us a nice big trading range, a nice big fat trading range. Bounce That's up and down, right? Totally, man, totally. <laughs> right. So those two things, you know, but, you know, the banks will still crank out big numbers, but are they going to be impressive numbers enough? Because, you know, the banks, you know, they, they were beat up, but they, they, they've had a nice little couple days here. They, were, they were, had a big up day last week. So uh, some of them are off their lows. We'll see, you know, Thursday or Friday starts the fun for sure. Yeah. And, you know, it's kind of intriguing. You know, Boeing was killing the Dow yesterday, but Apple was happening, you know, helping it tremendously, you know, so it, it's kind of interesting, you know, Apple just seems to keep clawing its way higher. I mean, it's little yeah, by little quietly. every day, but bottom line is that you go back two weeks and we're $1.84, 184, we're 202 today. Yeah, very quietly, if you, and Tommy, to go back to that December 24th, what was the Apple about one four, right yeah. after January when they doubt, when they pre-announced, about 140 and change. Yep. So that's up, you 140, know. 142 on the dot, Kevin. Pretty remarkable. There it is. Yeah. yeah. So think about that in terms of, of, of a stock like Apple. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. That, that is amazing. I mean, it's man. like it's 40%, 40, 40%, you know, it's, it's that. You take it, So watch this, folks. This is what's amazing. There's 4.7 billion shares outstanding. So, I mean, yeah. you're talking about to move a, oh, yeah. a share just, price like that is pretty It just pretty went amazing. up, what, $60, four point, you know, they added $240 billion in market cap since that date. I mean, that's the size of Tesla. What a business. Yeah. What a Big business. numbers. <laughs> Folks, right here, 45 minutes from now, outstanding program. Kevin, you have a great one, safe one. We look forward to the program in 45 minutes. Thanks for having me on, guys. Thanks, Thank Kevin. you. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. We have the Dow down 189, Nasdaq's up 21, S&P's down 14 and a half. We're coming right back. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. 
The TAS Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of TAS Market Profile, the TAS Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow is down 194. NASDAQ off 22. S&Ps are down 14. Let's just go inside the Dow first and see what we have here. I know because Boeing's up a little, so it's not Boeing that's destroying it out here today. Is it? I don't know. No, maybe it is. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's down. Uh, Boeing's got, uh, yeah, putting 20 negative points. Goldman 20. Uh, United Health 18, Caterpillar 18, it's kind of spread out, huh? Yeah. yeah, and I think what you might have seen, we'll go back to the chart, is I think Boeing even opened lower and has traded a bit higher. We'll see where. Yeah, yeah. The, but but it had gapped open uh, yeah, a little 367. bit lower. 367, and we're at the 371. Yeah. So that's... What is that low? That's exactly... What's the main low that it's at? 361.50. 52, okay. Yeah. So literally about 10 bucks. Yeah, that's... That's pounding on this thing. This is. Uh... It's an interesting case of just uh, trying to anticipate what's going to happen because it's not often you have a company that is by far. I mean, they basically have a duopoly, right? Right. A duopoly where two companies yep. represent a monopoly. You have Boeing and you got Airbus. Right. So yeah, they're facing some woes, but they take in a hundred billion dollars a year, and especially when you get into the fact that they're the American producer. Right. So you can't. The U.S. isn't going to cut Boeing out and just no. go with Airbus, so they right. kind of have a it's monopoly on that field. Right. Um, so, you know, that's what you're seeing in the market, where no matter what happens, it's it's not getting hit like you might expect for the scandal that they're dealing with. Yeah. It's, there's, there's so many moving parts. That's there's, there's, exactly. There's no, it's there's like, no you know, you can make a great case saying this is abysmal. They're going to have the plane just delayed for nine months. You can make the other case, right? Yeah. They have a monopoly on U.S., you know, defense, right. on duopoly oh, yeah. on the world. Yeah. And what does happen, which is going to be, we'll end up hearing about this, it's maybe take another quarter or so, uh, their suppliers. 
Okay. You know, imagine if we were a supplier, yeah. and all of a sudden you had, what, 52 planes a month, now you're doing 42. Sure. That's a big number. Yeah. That's so that you're going to have cutbacks there. Yeah. Now, uh, the other, you know, just, uh, again, point, 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 right? Because you go into it, and it's like uh, people need planes. People, companies, you know, airlines sure. need right. planes, and Airbus can't provide that many planes. So right. that's where you start going. Like, you want a plane? You're going to have to go to Boeing at some point. So we'll see where that battle ends. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. 877-927-6648. Let's go take a look at the NDX 100. Uh, strength inside the NDX, uh, this is up big. Cerner Corporation's up 12.5%. Uh, 12, 12 Good Facebook. Facebook is up 2%. You get Monster Beverage up 1.5%. JD.com's up 1.6%. Wind's getting hit. That's down 3.8%. You get American Airlines off 3, 3.5%. Three Micron's down 3. Let's see what's going on with wind. That so, has to do with the Crown deal, that they were going after Crown, and I believe that they, I'll just, uh, I got the article right over okay. here real quick. So, they end the talks for $7 billion Crown deal hours after it was confirmed. So they abruptly ended the talks to buy Australian billionaire Jane Packer's Crown Resorts Limited for $10 billion Australian, $7.12 U.S., just a few hours after the discussions were made public. Um, so that was rocking and rolling a little bit yesterday, I, I think, to the upside. We can pull up the chart. Um, but then you had it basically fall apart in the span of a few hours. And who knows? You know, they just might have wanted to quell the public uh, attention, but nonetheless getting hit today. So that Crown must be a, in Australia a gambling company, more uh, likely, right? Yeah, I believe so. Oh, yeah, see, I'll have a pull Where up. is it? C-W-N-A-U. C-W-N-A-U. There you go. Okay, yeah, manages game entertainment facilities, hotel facilities. Yeah, Melbourne, there you go. Okay. Perth. Yep, yeah. yeah. Australia. Um, right. Yeah. So that's trading 14.05 Australian dollars. <laughs> this gets interesting. Ooh, look at that. Oh my God. So that's interesting. So what? That's pretty wild. They, so is that closed? So that's closed. Oh. The news hasn't hit there. So that's, listen to this, yeah. folks. Oh, this is wicked. Yeah. So the night before last, it would have been right. at, at 11.68, right? Basically, yeah, right. Yeah, and then it closed last night at. 14.05. Yeah, and it's going to be right back down to 12 bucks at least. There might yeah. be a little bit of premium in there, right, right, for the possibility they come back to those talks. But yeah. uh, And if we could go into win as well, because they had a roller coaster in their own right. It seemed like the market really liked that idea, I believe. Let's go on. That's what I thought. See, both popped. Yeah. I had seen that yesterday. Right. And uh, then, of course, you had the pullback win today. Win was up to 146 yesterday. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And Wynn's still dealing with the regulatory issues in Massachusetts. That's, yeah. that's a big one. From Stevie Wynn himself. Yeah, right. That <laughs> is a big one. Yeah. Let's get over to that gold contract and take a look at gold. So you get we get gold pushing here. We did a couple hundred thousand contracts yesterday. Oh, it's going to be good. We're already at 145,000. That means that's going to be a 250 day out here. Let's see. We did, yeah, we did 200,000 yesterday. But 145 already. That's a good system. That's, that's, that's a good setup. Now, that's what we needed. We go to the GDX, because the GDX also needed more volume out here. Yesterday it wasn't bad. Oh, see, the GDX don't have enough volume, though. You know, yesterday we only did 30 million. You know, you're going into, like, 58. Okay. You get four today. You need, we need a lot more than that. Yeah. We need some buyers. Yeah. There's buyers out here. How about oil? Can we take a look oh. at the oil? Talk about volatility. Yes. We were just under 60, yeah, 64.6. When I did the 10 o'clock okay. update, we were just under 64. We we're up to 64.60, this morning. Yeah, yeah 64.79 being the high. Um, who would have said $65 oil by early April, right? Seriously, man. Yeah. Seriously. It's moving so fast, it won't even let us pull up the chart. I know. Bloomberg's not <laughs> slow this morning. Can I take a look? I'll, yeah. I'll jump uh, just over back here while we pull uh, to see the action. Yeah, so... Look, it was up there on a couple occasions. So you had 9 o'clock last night, 64.75, and you had 5.30 this morning right back up to that price point, and then quite a cascade yeah. um, down to a low of 63.76. I mean, you're talking about some volatility, man. We get the API number tonight after the bell, 4.30, and we'll get the EIA in like 24 hours. And it's not laying off that $65 number. That's the There you go. Line. Look at that move, man. Talk about even uh, Kevin Hinks, right? Those moves from December 24th, man. Um, yeah, oil this, included. I, I, exactly, and this is 
Crucial. 43.55. Yeah. Yeah, to 64. So call it $20 on 43. 21.50 would have been 50%. It's right up there. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. And so listen to this, folks. This is pretty. You talk about chasing money, uh, chasing yield. So here it is right here. So. Ah, uh, yeah, seriously. Uh, Aramco. Okay. So the, the way this came down, folks, so, so they have right now an unprecedented $100 billion demand. Yes. Now, the, the demand, when, they, when Aramco first came out, supposedly they're only going after $10 billion. $10 billion. Now, this is for their bond. Yes. To put, yeah. Right. And the bond, this, this bond themselves, they think this bond's going to pay like 3%. Okay. Um, which is amazing, okay, because you're not, in, you know, well, the bottom line is that Aramco is the biggest oil company in the world, and they have no debt, so I can see why that's the case. And they're basically a state company. Yes, for, right, you know, for all general purposes. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, what's going to be interesting here is to see how much they actually take. Okay. Because they, they're, even though it's a state company, it's, it's one company buying another company. That's what's going Aramco is buying this other company off the government basically you know so it's kind of they, which they, one okay i don't know they, i lost yeah that's 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 why they're doing this bond this this bond deal okay well if they get... stay right there tommy okay. and i'll be coming right back yeah we'll, we'll get our head wrapped around this our phone number is 877-927-6648 we have the uh, dow industrials right now uh trading uh down 178 nasdaq off 15 sps off 12 come right back Hey folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. And so if we if we take a look at this, uh, off, there's, there's a lot of moving pieces in this offer, folks. To say the least. So right? it's going to be pretty cool to see, number one, what exactly a Remco takes. So so when you have an order book of $100 billion, what the speculation is out here is that fund managers are coming in with a higher buy bid. than they actually yeah. bid than they actually want. I mean, what that would mean is that, let's say if you want a billion, you're saying, okay, I'll come in with five billion, okay? Sure. And they're hoping that they'll get a billion out of the deal, or a hundred million or whatever. Yeah, it was okay. supposed to be 10 billion and they have a hundred, so right. it sounds like a decent strategy in terms of if it's that overbooked, yeah. Right. Yeah. And what, what you're going to see here is that it's like, we'll find out first off what they're going to take, you know, because the, this was the first get-go that that this company had to open up their actually books to see how much money they make and they make a fortune and have zero debt the zero debt on this company which is pretty amazing yeah and um, i was just trying to get so the deal is largely largely seen largely seen as a plan b to raise money for saudi arabia's economic agenda after the ipo of aramco was postponed right um and i wanted to get the company in here which one is it civic Sabic, i believe i yeah. had it down here it's at the very end i believe yeah, you're right. Come on. Can we find it? No? All right, we'll pull it up. There's a lot, as it's you said, a lot end. of movement. Yeah. There it is. There we go. The company plans to use some of the proceeds of the bond sale to pay for the $69 billion acquisition of a majority stake in local petrochemical company, Sabic, from the country's sovereign wealth fund. The deal between the three government-owned entities where the kingdom's sovereign wealth fund sells its 70% stake to, in Sabic, and Sabic to Aramco uh, moves money from one pocket of the state right. to the other. Um, so jumping around again, it will be interesting to see. So where do they just say what they're going to be paying? They say 1.2. So given the massive demand, Aramco told investors on Tuesday it expects to pay about 1.1 percentage points of more than the U.S. Treasuries for its 10-year notes, compared with Saudi sovereign bonds trading about 1.2 percentage points. Right. Um, the indicative price of Aramco's bonds dropped by 15 basis points from the initial price talks on Monday, and having so, to do with that demand, right? And what's so unusual there, folks, is that you normally never see a company trade below the sovereign debt of the country. Sure. <laughs> and in this case, though, the reality is, is that that company is, is the government. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. They are the same exact entity. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's the scary thing of becoming an investor in Aramco. Because no matter what they say, the state government could just decide to tax them at 100 percent if they wanted to, yeah. and overnight your right. your profits are gone. Right. And they've said that that's completely how things are going to work too. Oh yeah. So no, listen, buyer beware. Yeah. Oh, there's there's yeah. <laughs> there's no doubt about that, man. Yeah. No doubt about that. If we get over and we take a look, let's go take a look at the, the bond market in general. So, uh, bonds out here this morning, they're lifting their head up again. Um, you know, you get. 700,000 contracts, which is good contract volume for early in the morning. You're going to see that we were testing, you know, two days ago you did 1.4 million. Yesterday a sideways move, you only did 860,000. That's early, 701. So we'll see whether, you know, we've done the test for this March uh, 22nd the number. That's 123.10. And uh, we'll see if we can get some juice underneath this thing now. And we go take a look at the 30 year. That's up 14 ticks, almost a half a point. And 112,000, I think that's pretty good volume, too. It, it, it definitely is. Because yesterday we did... Yeah. Yeah, we did 157,000. Um, yeah, went up to the... You know, it's interesting. So it went up to the high, and then it just couldn't uh, handle and get up and over that uh, high. We get over and take a look at the... Uh, so the small caps are still the weakest indice. Um, sideways move out here today. Now, we'll see we'll get an expansion of volume out here today, and that's what you'd be looking for. If you're looking for lower price, you're going to need an expansion of volume out here today. Yesterday, you did uh, 14 million. Well, you get 3.7 today. 19, three sixes of 18. Yeah, we, 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 we just may get that expansion of volume. The um, small caps haven't had... Netflix and Apple at no. 40 to 50 percent or oh. even more with their market cap. Seriously, um, man. That's probably a big reason of it, man. Oh, yeah. yeah. Big time. Yeah. You know what's amazing? I was bringing this up yesterday in the afternoon show. That, so if we look at Disney, you know, you get, when you look at some of these stories, folks, is that there's so many stories out here that, you know, Disney is going to be like a real runner against Netflix. And it's like, I have a hard time comprehending that. I really yeah. do. Um, 
you know, they, they got, listen, there's no doubt they got all the, you know, the superhuman, super shows. Which they got which Mickey Mouse, man. Oh, be, they got more than just the Avengers. I know, you know no, what I mean? No, I mean, they that's do. where yeah, but that's, they that's, Peter Pan, right? They got right. Beauty and the Beast. I mean, seriously, there are, it's just, I, I would, the Lion King, I mean, you can't, we could sit here all, I would well, probably I, get lost I, in the names. No, I'm with you there, for sure. Um, for and sure. that's, that's, you know, a brand that you can't take from them. And no, so, no, you can't. So they, they should be a player. I think they, they, now, I agree, like, they have a lot of work to do. Yeah. That's what, you know, you're saying. But I'd say it's an absolute failure if they can't get into people's houses with their library. Right. So we'll see what happens. It might take some time. Right. But they're just starting it. So they have, yeah, a, little, no, no, no. They have a little time. As in, you know, it's not like they've been out there for two years. They can't get, um, I'd say they, it'll be interesting to see. Yeah. That's quite a task, but they have the product that's you know so you're you sitting in that be, room you know, right you know it'd be mean, interesting to see if netflix tries to start some children's shows oh i'm sure they yeah. must already have them i don't know yeah. i'm right. sure right i mean think about it this, no this it, it would make sense yeah it would make sense for sure no, no doubt yeah 877-927-6648 if we go overseas and we take a look at uh last night in asia you had a mixed market nothing heavy out there last night uh, Europe today, you get uh, you get the DAX off eight tenths of one percent. The FTSE's down uh, three tenths. If we go to the FTSE, this thing's uh, such a mess. It's unbelievable. <laughs> Meaning the, the chart's not that bad. No, looking, you're just but, speaking the Brexit. I know. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, it, you know, it's going to be amazing. Is that if they really just turn around and, and by tomorrow say, okay, listen, we're going to extend to the year. That that just yeah basically. Because it was June something of 2020, I believe, right? Was that yes. the number? Which is just uh, over no, a year? No, it, uh, it was June of this year and okay. April 1st of 2020. April 1st of 2020, yeah. okay. April 1st, so it's, you know, you, you're talking about uh, quite an extension. And, of course, if that's what you get, well, no one's going to do anything for another six or seven months. And right. Tommy and I are going to be talking here nine months from now, and we're going to start talking about it again. I, it's amazing, I know. <laughs> it is. It, what's going to be interesting is that, you know, the euro... Start moving higher yesterday on basically it seemed like almost on the news that yeah it might be a year so it's so intriguing because the euro has saved itself you know three different times going all the way back to uh, November at this uh, 112 level well it's actually yeah it's 112 16 so very close to the lows of it um, pound pound is basically now, see, the pound, it, it, it's still intriguing. The, the pound looks like it wants lower price now, just slightly lower, nothing heavy. And the euro looks like it wants a higher price. So when you look at those moving pieces, you know, I, it seems like the, the euro itself uh, is going to be happy with an extension of a year, you know? Yeah, no news is good news on that front, I would say, from... Yeah, seriously. And that's what the elite establishment in Brussels is saying, too. That's what a lot of people are saying. Don't to be fair. leave. Don't, don't, don't leave that's me. That's what a lot of people are saying, not don't, just the elites. Don't so. leave me. Dow Industrials down 156. NASDAQ off 14. S&P's off 11.5. We have gold up 720. Notes and bonds. 10-year note up 5. 13. 30-year bond up 13. Come right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. 
Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. <laughs> Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow, Dow Industrials right now down 184. You get the Nasdaq off 25, S&P's off 15. And uh, if we take a look at the, the banking sector, now this is over in London, but this is just another <laughs> incident inside the banking sector that they can just pay hand over fist because it's just part of the overhead now. Man, uh, yeah. So you got Standard Charter agreeing Tuesday to pay more than a billion with a B to resolve a long-running investigation into its handling of transactions that violated economic sanctions, a penalty whose severity reflects the London-based lender's repeated violation of U.S. sanctions on Iran. So pretty remarkable, man. You were just kind of showing me, walking me through it at the break. So it starts with... They, uh, um, the case against Standard Charter is unusual that the bank initially settled with U.S. authorities in 2012, paying two-thirds of a billion, $667 million, over its handling of transactions involving Iran from 2001 to 2007, well under a two-year deferred prosecu prosecution agreement with the Justice Department. The bank revealed that it conducted <laughs> other transactions with Iranian clients after 2007 period that were not uncovered during the earlier investigation. So they had four years added to the deferred prosecution. That is like a sweetheart in itself, right? Yes. So we're just going to defer it for a little bit longer because right. you keep doing stuff. Right. Um, and then they scrutinized the bank more. Authorities examined payments handled by the bank's Dubai-based unit for shell companies in the UAB, um, United Arab Emirates, that were trading with Iranian counterparts through the bank. And Standard Charter admitted in the latest settlement that it processed hundreds of millions of dollars in clearing transactions between 2008 and 2014. 2008 and 2014. I know. They just never stopped. They never stopped. And, you know, we said a billion dollars. Um, you want to pull up their... Uh... Yeah. It, it, it seemed, when I first brought it up, folks, it, it, they, only, they only take in $15 billion. A year, yeah. Uh, but, yes, that's a year. And you can see how many, year, how many years they were doing it. Well, that's what I said. Right? Yeah. I said, not bad when this really ties back to stuff from 2001 was the first. Oh, that's when. That's how uh, standard. 2001 to 2007 was the original. They pushed it all the way to 2014. It's now 2019. You're going back 18 years, and they're going to pay a billion dollars. So, yeah, it's, um, it's, sta it's, you know, a staggering amount of money, but it's but 20 not, years yeah, of violations. Context, I've never yeah. stopped it. Right, right, exactly. I've never stopped it. Yeah, and it's not like they want to pay it. They have to pay it because they got caught. Yeah. So... It's amazing. I mean, What's their chart look like? Can you pull it up on a yeah, long-term? Uh, yeah. Maybe just go GPO and then try and bring it back. Uh, I wonder where, because this could have started hitting it in 2007, right? Yeah, yeah, I mean, look at this volatility. Right, 2007, 2010, um, it was 1,800. It traded all the way down to 400. Yeah. 
So and this would be they've in, had some woes. This would be in uh, pence. Yeah, I just mean percentage-wise, yeah. no, no, whatever sure. it's in, oh, right? Yeah. It, it, it. The, the amazing thing is that it's just it's it's so built in the system. Well, yeah, and not to be fair, but uh, this has been going on so long that that had to be priced into the stock for years, oh, right? Yeah. You know, I mean, it's yeah. because it said from 2008 to 2014, so they probably caught them in 2014, and then just been working through the case until 2019. <laughs> Uh, yeah, crazy, you, man. crazy, absolutely amazing. So, and then, and, 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 you know, when we start talk banks, folks, it's going to be a big Friday, JP, Friday, JP Friday, and kicks us off Let's April twelfth, yep. also known as Brexit Day, right? Oh yeah, yeah. So uh, quarter seven in the morning, Friday morning, J P Morgan is going to be looking to take in uh, twenty eight point four billion and bring two dollars and thirty six cents to the bottom line. Not bad for ninety days. I know, man. Yeah. Oh my God. Totally. Seriously, right? Yep. Big and numbers, man. The uh, look how they just keep growing, man. I mean, on staggering numbers, right? Yeah. Well, you know what's amazing? Think about this: that the um, aspect of how many, you know, you can go back years ago and they thought there would be no branch offices. I don't know if you've have you seen any of the new J.P. Morgan Chase branch offices? Not familiar, no. So check this out, folks. If you haven't seen it, it's I, I just saw this this week. Okay, there's one that opened down the street from us, right? So you walk into the bank, and there's no tellers in the bank. Okay. They have like six or seven offices that they're looking for corporate banking business and all of this. Okay. And then they say, okay, if you have a deposit, I had a deposit, right? You have a deposit? Oh, I can help you right away. They, great service. People are just standing up right as soon as you walk in. But they have these windows, right? And they press a button, and they walk behind the window, and a screen goes up, and then the person gets on the other side. So I was asking them, like, how does this work? And they says, well, this is the office of the future, and what we're going to be wanting. And he said to me, he says, you should just get this app on your cell phone. Sure. He says, so what you could do is that you, as you walk in, there's these machines there, you just hit the check, you deposit, you hit it like that, and you walk right back Electronic, up. Electronic, yeah. 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 So it was like, oh, my God. Definitely. I mean, and they, they, they're making it to the point. Then as soon as you leave, the, the screen goes back down again, too. Okay. I know. It's, it's, it's a great-looking office. Nice. Um, technology. You know, it's technology. And they're encouraging, you know, put the apps on your phone. Get that app. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to. No? Yeah, because it's that, it's that easy. Do you know what I mean? With, totally. With SunTrust has it, but what happens with SunTrust is that they don't they only allow you to deposit so much money on it per month. Okay. And that's why I asked JP Morgan. They have no they have no limit. They, okay. they, they want that's what Electronic, they want you to do. Sure. They want you to hit the thing, bang, okay, see you later. You know. Yeah. Without even going you don't even have to go to the office. Right. That's, that's, that's what I mean. Yeah. A lot of banks you can just deposit your check via taking a picture of right. it and stuff right. like that, right? Yeah. Pretty cool. So let's go take a look at some of the higher volume equities out here and see what we got moving. We got Joe, GE. So, well, let's look at GE again. <laughs> this is, this is a. Yeah, it's not that bad. <coughs> Down twenty nine cents. Excuse you know, me. We came off ten fourteen. Okay. Now with the market getting hit pretty hard yeah, too, right? right? Market down down two hundred. No. You got GE yeah. down at the lows of yesterday, maybe. That, that makes sense. Yeah. The um, Bank of America is down 36. Apple's up two. That's a big one, like we talked yeah. about. Facebook, man. Facebook's up. Same deal. Up three. Same deal. Yeah, and what's CERN? Let's see what's going on with CERN here. So, so they reached some kind of deal. I'd yeah, seen. CERN what? is up 10 percent. Okay, so this is a healthcare solution service company. Healthcare organizations. Ah, uh, okay. Board seats oh, with board. Starboard. Oh, I see. So this is like an activist deal. CERN yeah. Corporation Healthcare Data Records Company said it will increase its margin targets, buy back shares, and add four new board members after reaching agreement with Activist Investment Fund Starboard Value, along with uh, 1.2 billion buybacks. CERN plans to start paying a dividend. <laughs> it's, uh, it's pretty good, right? Yeah. They come to the company and they say, hey, take all that cash you guys have and just give it to our shareholders. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> They forced the issue, man. Yeah. And look at that. That's they, two different things happen here. You force the issue, stock is up, and they get a dividend. Yeah. Well, I guess you have you have to have the right secret sauce in order to make that happen too. Hey, we know. talked about it yesterday with the buyback deal. I mean, the worry is the future there. You know. Ooh, yeah. I mean, for sure. That was a you big... give back a billion dollars. Um, you can't use that money to grow in the future. No, so, but a, that fund might not be in it in the future. No, they won't be. Right. They'll be gone. Right. 
That is a big number. There's no doubt about that. You get NVIDIA back four bucks, but that's not that much in the context of where we've been. Oh, I know. XBT. Where is a uh, good old Bitcoin, right? That's hanging up there. 5,000 so is the new normal. You've been huh? up there five days. 5203. Sit there, laying there. Maybe 6,000 on the agenda. Dow Industrials right now down 204. You get the Nasdaq off 32. S&P's off 16 and a half. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow's off 180. Nasdaq's off uh, 30. S&P's are off 15. And we get uh, new champions, right? New NCAA men's basketball champions, Virginia. Congrats to them, man. I was just saying, quite a game overtime. Quite yeah. a way to finish the March Madness. And uh, Virginia, the big story here, man, is that last year, they were the first time ever a number one seed 
got knocked out by a 16 seed. Never had happened before. Devastating, I'm sure, to be those kids. Yeah. And uh, they come back and get it all done the next year with essentially the same team. So it's not wow. like they brought in a Zion, right, and, and changed wild, the world. Um, they, they got it done in quite a game and just in general. And as I was saying, that kid on the left-hand side, he looks so young, and that's yeah. one of the stars, right? I should know his name in myself, but yeah, he uh, he was the young gentleman who, in the semifinals, hit a three-pointer with like 10 seconds left and then hit three free throws to win the game by one versus Auburn. Uh, so congrats to them. So, and it went into overtime. I that's, know, right? That's pretty amazing. Amazing. And any time, man, you, got, you had to feel for him last year because, not that it was embarrassing, right, but it never happened before. You're number one right. seed, and really, in the NCAA tournament, you get 64 teams, you have four number one seeds, right, no, one through 16 in each bracket, and um, the teams that make it as the 16 seed, they're very low-level basketball programs when compared to a Virginia. Right. So they're, norm, no, they're, they're not even, like, in the same league there you know and so right. it's so rare um but guess what man kids get hot in basketball oh, yeah. and they can just drain those shots that's what happened and, and that's then, their dream right right you get excited yeah, and right, you know you right. it's not it's not quite the same i'd say as to like football where you have you know 60 players and yep. there's so many players you get you get a couple hot kids in basketball oh, yeah. um and that's why the nba you get these you just get a super team because you get three players right that's all you need you got you got a couple kids that get hot you got it you gotta love it. Yeah. Stay right there, folks. We got a fast market coming up next to our man, Mr. Kevin Hanks. Then we're gonna go to our man, Basil Chapman, Steve Rhodes, Dave White. Be back this afternoon. Thanks, pal. Thanks, man. Wow! Look at him, folks.